What an honor. What an honor and a privilege to be here with you this evening. Again, I've, uh, this is the second time that I come back to this meeting and uh, to talk about my favorite topic, which is God. And uh, yeah, I always start off by saying that I'm a grateful recovered alcoholic. And I know that some people sitting in these rooms are cringing because they don't understand where I'm coming from. But if you stick around long enough, you'll have the same experiences, you know, because um, if you had told me <clears throat> 14 years ago that I would be where I am today and that I would see the world through these eyes and that I would have God leading me through this beautiful life, there's absolutely no way that I would have believed you. And I am so grateful for that because God lift, literally God lifted me from the gates of death and insanity and misery lifted me and brought me into this beautiful life that I have today. And um, and that, that is unbelievable. And uh, the truth be told, I need to tell on myself because today was a really off day for me. I was feeling super exhausted and really low energy. And I was looking at Ali going, what the hell do I have to come and stay here tonight? And I ended up having a big fight with my mom, who's 85 years old, and she presses all my buttons and it was just a crazy, insane fight and, um, you know, character defects flying everywhere. And it just like, you know what, though, God puts always puts a teacher in your life. Right. So God has had my mom stay with us so that I can be a better person. I can learn to work on myself and be a better person. But I had to tell on myself because today I was like, I, but then I. But I do, but I still have so much to share because this God in my life is so big and so beautiful and so powerful. And the miracles that have happened in my life, I am here to talk about them. I'm excited to talk about them. And it's this meeting is a little intimidating. I keep seeing the pages increase over there, so I'm not paying attention to that. And uh, I'm here to talk to you guys about the miracles of my life. And, and, and I truly mean it that God lifted me from those gates of death and insanity and brought me into this beautiful life. And, and I chose this topic today because honestly, Lord grant that I may seek to comfort and to be comforted, to understand and to be understood and to love and to be loved. That is in a nutshell, walking this walk with God. That's what that is for me. And that's one of my favorite pieces of the St. Francis prayer that was actually written by a non-alcoholic. But when I say those words and when I try to walk that through my life and through my day, um, you know, it's, it's, it's exactly what God wants me to do. Um, so, you know, I, I came into these rooms in 2006, broken. I had been drinking uh, and doing all kinds of other stuff, trying to fill this emptiness within me, this God hole, this soul sickness, whatever it is that you want to call it. And I always thought alcohol was the problem, but it was never the problem. It was my medicine. When the alcohol was taken away, I was a lunatic. And by the time I made it to you guys, I was a complete broken soul. I had destroyed everything around me. There was no doors open to me. My family disowned me. I had, I was completely broke and devastated and full of fear and anxiety constantly. I couldn't look myself in the mirror. I couldn't look at other people. I was completely useless and I wanted to die. And I had nothing left in my life. And I came into, and I came to AA and um, I had exhausted all my resources. And I started to work this program and, uh, you know, I started to get my life together very in a few months, things started to shift and turn around for me. And I took my foot off the gas and I went back out again. You know, the disease just like talked to me and I didn't know what was going on. But this alcoholism that's always doing push ups is always talking in my ear. And when I'm not following the things I'm supposed to be doing, uh, it, it took me out for another five years. And um I finally made my way back, you know, but for the grace of God, I made my way back and I dove into the program with my tentacles deep into it and worked the program because my life depend, depended on it and it still does. And um, I'm here to tell you that the broken soul, the selfish, self-centered alcoholic that trampled on everyone my whole life and had everything destroyed. And I always blamed the outside world for everything that was wrong within my life. I, I, I became a person, but for the grace of God, 
to, to assume understanding for my life and to gain responsibility and to recreate a life in these rooms with the God of my own understanding. And there have been some incredible miracles that have happened in my life as a result of me walking with God. I am not that broken soul anymore. I am a woman that holds my head up in life. And, and I truly do believe that I get on my knees and I pray and I and I do that because I, I have to turn it over to God. And that's the first thing I do in the morning, whether, you know, it's I, I try to roll right on my knees and pray as soon as my day gets busy because my life is busy and it's full and it's loud and it's really, it starts early and it's just before anything starts, I try to get on my knees and I turn it over and I pray to God. And my prayer could could be anything. God doesn't make too hard of terms. It could be the third step prayer. It could be the seventh step prayer. Or it could just be something simple like, God, guide me through my day. Help me be of service. What is your will for me today? God, fill me with your loving being so that I could flow through me into the lives of others. It could be anything. Um, and, uh, and then I have to, at some point, quiet my mind to listen to the voice of God because God's one and only voice is silence. And... Um, I don't, you know, pray, meditation to me can can take different shapes and forms. It doesn't have to be silent. It could be silent um, or it could be guided meditation or it could just be me holding my baby or it could be me walking outside and just quieting my mind because I don't know about you guys, but I have a committee up in here. Like if I wake up in the middle of the night and, and I want to go to the washroom, there's like 200 people up in my head talking. So there is no room for God to penetrate unless I try to at least quiet it down and listen to, to God. And my God talks to me through many different ways. My God talks to me through my being, through my intuition. It's a sixth sense, whatever you want to call it. And I feel it and I listen to it and I have it guide me and I have it lead me through life. I listen to that voice and I feel it. I just do. As long as I'm on the right track and I'm tuned in and I'm doing the things that I'm supposed to, that's when I hear God the most. And God has also put people in my life that when they talk to me, I know it's God giving me a message. Ali is one of those people. There's been many times in the last few years when he comes and he'll say something to me and I, I just know that it's a message from above. I know that. Or my sponsor. My sponsor is also uh, an angel that God has put in my life and when she talks to me a lot of times, I know it's God talking to me, but uh, there have been some incredible things that have happened in, in, in sobriety and in this program. And as long as I continue to hold my higher powers hand and walk through this life, they'll continue to keep happening. Um, I'll give you some examples. I mean, um, you, as most of you know, Ali and I met in the program and, um, Ali and I met in the program and we got married a year later. We fell deeply in love and we had a dream wedding in Mexico and flew our 30 members of our family out there. And Ali and I danced until the sun came up, sober, love and life. And then we came back to Canada and, and we wanted to have a baby. And I was 41 years old. And the doctor said, ma'am, you only have like less than 5% chance of or 3% chance of getting pregnant. And Ali and I held hands and we looked at the doctor and we looked at each other and we said, but you don't know that God that we know. And a year later, I got pregnant. No, not a year later. I had, had a, yeah, I was 41 years old. I got pregnant and we had our first one, which is now nine years old. And, um, and, and, and we have a seven month old sleeping upstairs right now. And uh, that's like, <laughs> and I'm 52 years old. So, you know, things like this don't just happen. They happen in the fourth dimension. They happen when you're walking with God. They're, they're happening because, you know what? Um, a lot of people told me I was crazy. And, and even Ali was like, okay, maybe, uh, you know, we're going to be grandparents by the time the baby's like getting older. And, you know, there's a little truth in that. I'm not going to admit it. But I said, I, one time he really pissed me off, excuse my language. And he said, maybe we should rethink this. And I said, I'm divorcing you. Yeah. <laughs> and he started laughing at me <laughs> because you know, when, when God puts a desire in my heart, I know that it's being put there. I know that God put that desire in me and I follow that intuition and I follow God's guidance. And, 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 
And what that four years of trying led to was a manifestation of a beautiful baby boy. Uh, and I call that co-creating with God. There has been so many beautiful examples, you guys. When I came and I got sober in this program, uh, right when I got sober, my father got uh, sick. He got cancer. He got two types of cancers. And I'll tell you that my whole drinking, using life, I had my head in the sand and I was not able to be of service to anyone. And when I sobered up, that changed. That totally changed. My assignment was now different. And I spent every single day with my father um, for five years. We went, I took him on trips. We went to, we went to see um, John of God in Brazil. We went to speak, he was a spiritual healer. We, I just, I was by his side every day and he was my assignment. And uh, I never felt closer to my father and he was my love and my hero. And after, you know, when he finally went, I held his hand until the, his last breath. And I can tell you that I did everything and I was there for him. And I was able to breathe and sleep at night knowing that God was there with me and God guided me to be of service to my father. And that's, Lord grant that I may speak to comfort and to be comforted. That's what that's all about to me, you know, being able to be of service to my father. And also when he passed, I was the, I was the pillar, one of the pillars of strength for my siblings. I was bringing God into it. I was, I was being strong for them. That hopeless alcoholic that I once was, I was able to be of service to my whole family. Um, my mother now lives with me. I already mentioned that in the beginning. She's 85 years old and, and she is my biggest trigger and we fight all the time, but I love her to death. And that is such a blessing that God has allowed me to be of service and to care for my mom, to be able to support and to have her living with us. And um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not easy, but it is a true blessing, uh, an opportunity for me to give back. Um, I'm, I'm a good mom, you know, I have my moments. It's not easy being 52 and having a seven month old and working full time and having a nine year old screaming in the background, but they are my life, those kids. And I am so blessed and I'm proud to say that I am a good mom. I put them first and I'll do anything for them. I'm a good mom today. I can, I'm a good sister. I'm a good wife and I'm a good daughter. And all of those things is because God is present in my life. All of those things are because of Alcoholics Anonymous. Is because when I get down and I pray and I ask God to guide me, then I sit in silence and then I walk in through my life. I bring this program into my life and I bring God into my life, into all aspects of my life, into my relationships, into my work life. And I, I use that opportunity to become a better person. Um, my work, um, I, I own a recruitment company, which I started in 2006 when I first sobered up. And it's grown over the years. And um, I truly believe that it's my bliss. And I truly believe that when you are tapped into source, accidents like this happen. You get connected with your bliss. <laughs> You know, and you meet the right people at the right times and beautiful things like that tend to happen when you're walking with God. That's what I love, right? And so I have, I know that this job is 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 my calling. I love what I do. Um, I love my team. I'm able to um, make a difference in my job because I interact with, with humans and I help them find jobs. And even when I'm not making money from it, that's the delicious part of my job is that, is that sometimes somebody will walk into my office and there'll be somebody that I'm not able to help because my we specialize in French and English recruitment and somebody will come in that doesn't speak French, but I'll bring, I'll bring them into my office and I'll make them a coffee and I'll sit there and I'll fix their resume for them and I'll treat them like gold and I'll make them leave that office because I know that they just commuted with a bus to come all the way there. And I'm not going to let them walk away empty handed like other agencies do. And so they are just sitting there shocked saying, we've never experienced this before. I just don't know why you're helping me. And, uh, and I smile back and I know why I'm doing that. 
because that's what I do when I'm walking with God. And that's you, my friends, you know, making money and all the deals and all that, that I love to don't get me wrong, but the delicious part of my work is when I'm giving back is when I'm giving back and helping someone. And it just centers me. Like I'm, it happens that I'm just in the middle of work and things are happening and I'm, I'm getting stressed out over this deal not closing or that deal not closing. And then some poor person walks into my office. They just came and they have a family to support. They don't have a paycheck to put on. They don't have food to put on the table and they're looking at me with tears in their eyes. And I'm able to sit there and fix their resume for them. And I'm making calls for them and I'm doing everything that I can to try to help that human being. And then God comes in. That's when God comes in. When I'm busy trying to take care of his kids, he's helping me. He's injecting me with his love and his energy. That's what happens. And then I call Ali and I'm like, oh my God, do you know what just happened? Like I just, everything sheds. All the bullshit that we always think about and all the fears and all the ridiculous things that don't mean anything. They all just fade away because I'm now filled with source. I wish I could be in that mode all the time. Um, but that is a, one part of my job that I love. And I, and I teach my team to do the same thing. And, and, and they do. They give back to others. The other day, one of my recruiters had somebody in her office for 45 minutes. And I said, Jennifer, you know, I love that you're, that you're giving back. Maybe you want to watch the time a little bit. <laughs> I love what you're doing, though. That's what it's all about. <laughs> she started laughing at me. Um, we talk about God. Nobody's an alcoholic in my work, but we talk about God. We do vision boards and we dream big and we talk about Wayne Dyer and all kinds of stuff. And, and uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a really big follower of co-creation and, and, and Esther and Jerry Hicks and, you know, co-creating with God is such a big, it's been such a big part of my journey. It has been. Um, I've, I've made a, six or seven vision boards and every image or anything that I put on those vision boards have manifested and I keep recreating new ones because, because in this beautiful life with God, God wants us to be filled with happiness and excited and enthusiastic about life and have everything that we want. And the beauty of it is that we can do that and we can co-create with God. And there are so many beautiful things in my life that I have as a result of that. And I love it. We built a school in Senegal a few years ago, and uh, it was unbelievable. I always had this dream to do something like that. We actually were going to go there to Senegal and, and build the school with, with a small village that the kids didn't have schools. They, they would go inside a muddy hut and, and, and learn. That was their school. And we were going to go there, and the pandemic hit. We weren't able to go, but uh, Beyond Bilingual, my company, funded and built a school in Senegal. And when I saw the, the the images that they sent with holding up signs, thank you, Beyond Bilingual, it just melted my heart. And that's that's what I call walking with God. I'm, you know, able to give back in every aspect of my life, financially, um, with my time, with anything. I am now a woman that... Um, from the moment I open my eyes in the morning, I think about what I can contribute and what I can do for others. And um, when Ali says that, I, that I'm kind, even when I'm not happy, because if Ali and I have a fight and I'm pissed off at him and I don't want to see him, I'll still put dinner in, on the table for him. That's what I'll do. And he'll never understand that. And I don't understand it either. I get mad at myself. I'm like, what am I doing? But I can't help myself with some disease I have. Honestly, I do that. We just had a huge fight and I cook him a nice meal and I put it on the table. Who does that? I have some serious issues that I need to work on. Um, my life is beautiful today, guys. And you know, I'm not saying that bad things don't happen. I'm not saying that I'm sober and that I'm in recovery and, and it's all lollipops and rainbows all the time. It's not... Because you know what, there's there's things that happen. Life is about reality. Life is about, uh, you know, there's sicknesses, there's pandemics, there's, you know, there's scary moments in life. I've gone through a few with, with my work, you know, I got, um, when I had the baby, even though we do have, we're, we're blessed and we have help, I fell behind a little bit and it put me in a very fearful place. Um, there's things that happen, you know, uh, fears that come in every once in a while. 
but nothing like the fears that used to be that I carried with me 24 7 24 7 constant anxiety and fear when I have moments of fear now what do I do I I, I get on my knees I pray I bring God into it um, I try to be of service. I, you know, I work around it. it. It says in the book that spiritual solutions will solve all my problems. It never said I'm not going to have any problems, right? And so I work through them. I get through it with God. I don't have to drink. I don't have to stick my head in the sand and go into oblivion. That's the beauty of this program. That's the beauty of embracing God and taking him by the head. And... Uh, and so I have this opportunity to be here and to live my life with integrity, with humility, with respect. And I like I can look in the mirror and like the person that I see, and I'm able to be of use in service to other women as well. One of them is beautiful, Ava, staring at me over here, been a big part of my life, and my beautiful sponsees that I'm able to work with and and watch their lives transforming as a result of this, this beautiful program and God holding their hands through life. It's such a miracle and such a blessing. Um, I think that's all I got. Thank you so much for allowing me to uh, share my experience with you. And that's all I got. Thank you so much. For a whole, for another hour, so much generosity spilled over from the screen. I, I could not stop looking at you. I could not stop listening to you. My heart opened up and I thought, I literally put my, I mean, I'm in some fearful, well, I'm gonna turn it into a question, I promise you. Uh, I was putting myself in, in in the shoes of having experienced some fear these days. And I was thinking about what you were uh, discussing. And I thought to myself, with all of that, you're talking about having walked your father home, having uh, supportive of being supportive of your, of your mom, um, the mother to your children that you are without you having to say it. I, I, I look at you and I see that. And, um, I want to ask you about your daily practice, what you do. That's a question that I asked Ali in the past, and I I just love hearing, I would love to hear what it is that you are, uh, um, because I've, I've adopted some uh, new practices these days uh, that I'm engaging in, and uh, uh, it's critical, it's critical that I learn more. If, if I want to continue to enlarge my spiritual life, I want to hear how you're doing it, because there, there is no faking what you just did here for half an hour. There is no faking what you, what you shared. Thank you. Thank Beautiful. you. Thank you so much for the question. Thanks, Sally. <clears throat> so, um, my daily practice is uh, never the same. It always, it's always different. Um, but I do definitely will not miss my prayer in the morning. I will, um, I will get on my knees as soon as I can and turn it over. Like I said, I will any prayer God God does not make too hard a turn so I could be anything from my heart or it could be the Saint Francis prayer or it could be a portion of the Saint Francis prayer just the, the one the quote that I had tonight that's one of my favorite Lord grant that I may seek to comfort than to be comforted or it could be the seventh or it could be anything but it does have to be a prayer of me turning it over or you know if I'm working on certain character defects I'll ask God to to help me with those um Right. If I if I've just done inventory or if there's something that I'm struggling with in my life, that'll be what I'll focus on and ask God to fill me with the opposite of what my character defect is. I like to do that rather than talk focusing on the actual character defect. And then um writing my mind in meditation. Um it, I will be lying to you if I tell you it happens every day, and I don't want to do that. It does it definitely I try my absolute best. It's very busy in this house with a baby and a kid and work and every is just it's a lot but i try to do it uh, if i get a minute to get away to sit and quiet either just listening to breath or it could be guided meditation or it could be listening to theta waves i like listening to theta waves because it kind of my house is very loud and so it, it quiets the noises and all i'm listening to is theta waves 
Um, or it could be when I'm just giving milk to my baby and just closing my eyes, you know, or even just going for a walk in the stroller and just quieting down and just listening to the sounds of nature. So meditation can also take different shapes and forms and God does not make too hard a terms as long as I'm doing my best. And I think it's, it's progression and not perfection, but it is an absolute necessity. And, and you know what, when I don't do it, I'm a little bit loca and very impatient and irritable and reactive. Yeah. That's in a nutshell. So when I do those things more, I'm more at peace. I'm more guided. And I'm uh, my day just all overall turns out to be sweeter than normal. <laughs> Thank you, Aspie, for a beautiful answer. Michelle, please do come in. Hi, Aspie. My name is Michelle. I'm an alcoholic. I, my mind is like going in circles because I have a statement and I have maybe a question, but when you talked about um, your mom being your trigger and going walking through your fought with your father in his uh, passing, I I've experienced uh, passing of my father, and then I I my mother and my sister and my husband and um, it's odd how my mother and my father were very very difficult because the relationship was very very difficult it was early my father was early on in recovery my father my mother was later my mother was my trigger too but you know the, the fact that like you said i i spent i did everything out of love for for my parents i did everything that god i i believe god wanted me to do and I'm very grateful for that. And when my sister passed, it was a whole different experience because my sister and I were we were we were deeply in love with each other. We were great pals. And um it didn't change. And my, you know, it's 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 amazing that like, you know, even though the relationships were different, it didn't change. It was the same. It was exactly the same. If I walk in love, no matter who the person is, it doesn't matter. And my husband passed away 17 months tomorrow. And again, I walked in with love with him. And uh, I'm very grateful for that. And I just had an experience tonight. That I just want to just want your, you know, like you're, you're talking about the St. Francis prayer. And it's better to be loved. And, <clears throat> and I also believe it's better to be kind. And I was walking my dog and a woman actually came out of her house and started screaming at me. <laughs> because my dog pooped in an area she didn't want him to poop in, apparently. And um, anyway, I just smiled and I said, I, I picked it up and she just continued to berate me. And um, and I just, I, I it was like kind of weird, but like normal Michelle would have like, like start blasting her, but you know, I just looked at her and I, she was watching my dog go to the bathroom. She was watching me pick it up. And then she opened the door and started to berate me. And I, I, you know, I said, you know, I showed her, I did pick it up and um, I always pick it up. And then I said, to, uh, she said, she starts really berating me. And then I just said to her, have a, have a nice day. And she slammed the door shut on me. And as I walked home, I just felt with such gratitude that I don't carry that anger anymore. Like I could have got really, really into her face, you know, but that's just not, that's what the programs taught me. It doesn't matter what other people are doing that I could actually separate myself from that other person. And I did, and I walked with God in that situation. I didn't walk with Michelle. Michelle's ego would have just like blasted her, but, you know, so when you were talking about your mom, I guess it brought up some triggers in me as far as my mother's relationship. And um, I don't think it matters if it's a good relationship or bad. I mean, do you feel that way, too, that you can, you know, go through these experiences in life that God presents to us? We have no idea what's what's around the corner, so we don't know what we're going to face. And um, do you feel it's like the equal? Because I feel it's equal. I don't care if it's not a good relationship. If it's an, a, a relationship, I don't even know the person or if it's a loving relationship, I feel I need to walk with God and, and to be 
to to love and to be loved. And I was just wondering your feelings on that. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you, Michelle. We love you. I have to, um, I'm not really hearing your question. Can someone help me with the, I wasn't. Michelle wants to know whether or not, no matter what your relationship is with the person, can you lean into the St. Francis prayer? Can I what? Sorry? Lean in. Can you stay in a position of wanting to love rather than be loved, even when the relationship is difficult? Um... It's 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 what I'm what's what I strive to do, for sure, um, to stop and to pray and to bring God into to the situation. Absolutely, it's not always easy <laughs> because sometimes the ego will step in, but it's something that I'm striving towards. I think definitely to try to pause and to you know once once that pause is there, then God usually follows that right. So that's definitely something that we can all I'm striving towards to do more and more but definitely a lot more than than I used to be you know back in the day when I or when I first came into the program it's it's been a, it's definitely a lot of progress so I'm happy about that thank you thank I hope you. that answers your question yeah thank you Linda would you come in Hi, everybody. Linda, um, alcoholic. Apsi, Apsi, thank you so, so very much. Um, um, just a beautiful, powerful, uh, just, a, a, just a great share. And you said so many different things. Um, and I do have a question, but you talked about, um, you know, if you don't sleep well and get up, get up in the middle of the night or whatever. You know, I woke up at three this morning. And I was like wide awake and I, 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 I begin to pray because if I don't, the mind, it just, you know, the, and, and there's just been some things going on and every, you know, you've talked about fear and a couple of others have mentioned fear and um, I'm so grateful I get to come somewhere like this and hear people like you share your experience and, and, and remind me of why I must how necessary it is for me to just continue to continue this trudge and how important it is. Um, and when you talked about how, uh, you know, when you skip stuff a little, when not skip, kind of slip, slip a little, you know, um, go a little local. And anytime that I do that, I'm like, why do I like, I'm, I am always like, why do I do that? when I try, when I'm trying to practice walking with God and, and, you know, it's life is just beautiful, even when it's not. So um, just thank you. Just beautiful share. You talked about co-creating with God. And I, I don't know if you were referring to the vision board, that's part of it, but can you just share a little more about that? Co-creating with God. I've not heard that before. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so I have learned by reading a lot of books, a lot of, um, I could, I could talk to you about them in, a, in, a, in, in detail, some of the books that have led me to that. A lot of Wayne Dyer followings, a lot of Abraham Hicks um, is, teaches us that, you know, um, we have desires, God puts desires within our hearts, and we can, we can learn to manifest those desires. So that definitely like a vision board is is one of those things is like putting a visual of, of something that that I want, whether it's um, something you can touch or whether it's a state of being like, I mean, my wedding, I had a this is before I met Ali. I had a picture of a couple because I was my big my burning desire in my heart was to find my soulmate and to get married um that and I know God puts all those desires within us so when I had this picture on my on my vision board and it was a couple on a beach and I had that there and and things I would do is I would cut out a picture of my own face and stick it on there and um and some people may think that's crazy but it's not it's because you're you 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 your subconscious believes it to become true and real and whatever you feel is real in your life starts to manifest in your life. And that's part of co-creating. So years later, when I met Ali, 
um, I had put that vision board away and I took that vision board out. I was cleaning out my closet because everything on that dream board came true for me. I had like my ring that I'm wearing on my finger. I had the exact same picture on there. The picture that I had of the wedding of this couple, which I put my face on, there was a picture of Ali and I on the beach that was identical to that. And when I saw that, I freaked out. I said, Ali, look at this. This is like, this is us. And I didn't even know, like from things in my house, like the gazebo in the backyard or my kitchen, or it could be anything, even the washer and dryer, like I'll put anything on a vision board or it could be a state of being. It could be surrounded by a family, happy, peaceful, just uh, meditating. It could be anything. But I truly believe that we walk with God and we are, we can co-create with God. Uh, Wayne Dyer has taught me some beautiful meditations that I did when I was trying to get pregnant. And I can talk to you more about those too. There's there's different things you do with the meditating to the sound of Om, which is a sound of gratitude and, and waking up to the sound of ah and meditating and chanting my butt off. And everybody in the house thought I was insane until I got pregnant. And uh, yeah, I truly believe those things because ah is the sound of creation. And Wayne Dyer will tell you all about that too. So I truly love manifesting because it's fun. And this is what life is all about. It's about coming into these rooms and getting sober and learning to uh, to live our lives to the absolute fullest. And and I, I can do that with God leading me. I hope that answers your question. What a beautiful, beautiful answer. Thank you so much. I want to acknowledge that we have more hands than maybe we have time, but I'm going to try to get us all in. Nash, my brother, please come in. Hi, everybody. Nash, alcoholic, Gafsi, thank you so much. Um, my question was just answered. Uh, Linda, thank you for uh, asking that question about co-creating with God. Uh, I was just going to ask the same thing. And uh, I just want to say, Afsi, thank you for that. Uh, the, it's an inspiring uh, thought that uh, we can co-create with God and, and, and live out our dreams. Uh, so with that, I'll, I'll, I'll pass and I'll let the next question come in. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Nash. Ah, my new friend. Please come in, Jean. Hey, family. Jean Pierre, alcoholic. Uh, there was there was no way I couldn't come in and say thank you. I'll try to keep this brief. Um, I heard so much God in your share and miracles, and you like you reminded me why I'm here and why I want to stay sober, and it's so relevant to get that reminder. So, I think my question is along the lines of: I have a few twenty four hours now, but I'm still pretty new to sobriety. And I think sometimes I have a little trouble. I have really big dreams for this life, right? And I kept hearing you say how like God puts these desires inside of us. And I don't know if it's a lack of trust in God or just a lack of trust in me. But um, I think sometimes I might have a, a trouble differentiating if if the desire within me is of God or is of me. And then I'd say my other part of this question is, like not all of my active addiction, it, like it's hard for me to see it. The further I am from the desperation, the more my mind wants to trick me into thinking that it might have been a little more glamorous than it was. And sometimes when it comes to being um, um, of service to those I love and my family and bringing value to them, I, I don't know that I trust myself to have fully separated from that character you, you know like i like sometimes i feel like can i be of service have i done enough work are my motivations mine um i'll leave it at that thank you and thank i was just saying thank you so much thank you <laughs> So was there was there I I didn't get the question was there a question So so yeah so I think the the question is the the how do you differentiate the desires that God has put in you from ones that maybe are self motivated Um I think that you you just need to have a little faith in that you know and I think that if you're doing everything you can on a daily basis Jean Pierre to you know, you're doing your prayer, you're trying to be a better person, you're in this program, you're staying sober, you're walking that walk with God, you need to just 
have a little faith in that, that, you know, if God is talking to you and you start to build that intuition and that sixth sense and, you know, it gets, uh, it, it, it starts to grow and it's become stronger and stronger over the years. Uh, it's something, it's a relationship you're nurturing and building with a, with your love, with the God of your own understanding. So, um, I don't know. I, I just think that if you're doing everything in your life to try to put your best forward, foot forward in life, um, then listen to those voices. And usually if you're on track and you're trying to do everything that you can, then I think you can trust that those voices will be the voices of God. And they become more and more and, and our ego starts to go and they become more and more as you keep walking this, this walk with God. Absolutely. What a beautiful answer. Thank you. Kelly, you're up next. Uh, good evening, family. I'm Kelly. I'm an alcoholic. I know we don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to cut right to the question. You said that, you know, in the book, it says spiritual solutions will solve all my problems. Have you ever been presented with a spiritual solution that you didn't like? And how did you get how did you get through that? Hmm. I mean, um, have I been presented with a spiritual solution? You know, this the work in this program is not always fun to do, you know, and, and my ego and my alcoholism uh, is always trying to pull me away from this program and pull me from light. That's its job. My its job, my alcoholism and my ego wants to keep me in the dark and keep me miserable, put me in a room by myself with a bottle in my hand. So yeah, of course, because my ego has tried to separate me from this program by talking crap in my ears a lot. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of times that I know that I have to put pen to paper and I have to do inventory. I need to clean house. I need to make an amend, but my alcoholism tries to pull me away from that and I'll procrastinate and I'll become crazy and miserable. You know, I'll end up doing that work and then become free and open the channel with me and my higher power. But of course the answer is yes, because I'm an alcoholic <laughs> truly. And, um, and my, my and, and it's a constant battle with my disease that I have to do this work and and it's all the actions that lead me and tear away the you know whatever it is between me and my higher power. It's the actions that that produce a peace a peaceful state of mind for me. So yeah, absolutely a lot of the program, especially I think the the, the things like inventory have have been difficult to do and to look at for sure. So we have three hands and we've got six minutes. Kathy, come on. Thanks, Alice. Thanks, Fellowship of the Spirit. Thank you so much. Afshi, Af sorry, I can't really pronounce your name, but um, it was so beautiful. Thank you for transparency and thank you for your beautiful energy that you brought to the meeting. My question is, um, the line on page 87, seeing as you guys are a couple just like Howard and I, that line, if circumstances warrant, um, where is it? We ask our husbands to join us in morning meditation. Do you guys have any particular daily practice, perhaps weekly practice or anything you partake in together? Um, prayer meditation, if you guys ever get that time. Thanks. Um, so every once in a while we will. I get down on our knees together and we'll just hold hands and, and we'll pray together. Um, it's not a daily practice, but it definitely does happen. It even, we sometimes involve our nine-year-old. He knows the, the, he knows the prayers. He knows the serenity prayer. We're teaching him to pray. Um, he knows the St. Francis prayer, but yeah, Ali and I sit and we do that sometimes, but Ali has his own ritual. He's up a little bit earlier than me sometimes at 3 30 in the morning and he sits with God and he has his thing and he does his thing and I got my little sanctuary he's got his but yeah we do that and you know what sometimes we'll sit in meditation together too and that's really you know if we're if we're going through something or um I don't know we'll we'll, we'll do that once in a while and it's really sweet it's really it's really nice to have a partner that is walking this walk with God. It truly is. I don't know how I would deal with it if Ali was not a God person. That's, by the way, one of the things that I co-created is I asked God to give me a spiritual man and boy, did he ever. <laughs> and uh, yeah, for sure. I said, oh my God, I'm really into God and spirituality and look who I got. 
Um, so yeah, definitely it's 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 a very sweet thing, but it's not a daily ritual for sure. Come on, Jeffrey. Hey, Jeff, so remember about Alcoholics Anonymous? I had to pull over, okay? I'm driving to my home group every Tuesday at this time, and I listen to you people, and I had to pull over. So, Afsi, I just wanted to, okay, there he is, you know, Ali, the guy doesn't know how to load the dishwasher properly. And look at him, he's breathing in and out, in and out sort of thing. We're packing a little bit of a resentment there. But we still feed him. We still put food on the table. So I believe through repetition and the psychic change that our conduct shows up without us knowing it. We're still being of service. So my question to you, is do you have a practice in your 11th step that consists of the 10th step that when these crop up, where you bring in step six and seven, which I truly believe is step 11, do you have a practice of getting entirely ready to go to your God, even when things are sensitive and when there's not a cloud on the horizon? Thank you. My, my, my practice is simply just to, just to pray and to just, you know, just to pray and try to turn and try to help another human being. That's my practice. Mm -hmm. It's simple. And when I, when I, when I, when I turn to another human being, God comes in. That's what normally happens. When I try to be of service to another human, that's when God comes in. Mm -hmm. So that's simple. Practice. I love that we were able to get everybody in. Nikki G, you have the last question. Thank you so much, Afsi. This was such a beautiful meeting. I'm so, so thankful I got to hear you tonight. I had a lot of chaos going on and God was like, you got to be at this meeting no matter what. And um, and I was here and I, I heard so much. Um, with that being said, I have a little guy at home and um, I've been to traditional like church and stuff with him and and I 100% I believe in God. Um, I believe he lives inside of all of us. Um, with that being said, this program has opened up me to like just the love encompassing all. And some of the churches I've been to, it's like very strict and very like it's there's only one way. And with that being said, I'm struggling as a mom. Like, how do I like introduce my child to like what I know now, too, and not like this old God and this old I don't even know if that makes sense, but my question to you is how, with your experience with God, how have you like shown your kids that too? Like, is there, what do you do? That's all I got. I think that, uh, well, my, my little one is, is only seven months. So my nine-year-old has um, been, was born into a sober home. Um, and Ali and I have been in recovery since that's all he's ever seen has been um, you know, Ali and I praying, uh, meditating, doing all these talks and talking about God. We talk about a God to him. We tell him what it's all about. And uh, he, I guess he gets to really truly witness the power of God and kindness and being there for other humans and, and, and being there for each other. You know, that's what he gets to witness. What a, what a miracle to, to be able to have a sober home and to, and for children not to see that disgusting, you know, way of living and they get to witness and to live it, you know, and, and he learns from that. He learns to, to pray and he learns to be kind and he's got such a beautiful heart, you know, because that's what we teach him to be kind and to be generous and to put others first and to be considerate and all those things. I think that that's what really truly matters. Right. And so he learns that way just by watching, watching it and living it every day. Mm -hmm. And the same will happen with a seven month old, hopefully. <laughs> Ashley, thank you so much for a beautiful share in the demonstration of what miracles in real life look like. I've been to your home. I felt the presence of God in your home. Thank you for just being a light. Teresa, back to you. Yes, indeed. On behalf of the Fellowship of the Spirit Step 11 Speaker Series, we'd like to extend a warm appreciation to AFSI for sharing her experience, strength, and hope with us tonight. We'd like to thank all those who put this meeting together.